Wow, so John Paul Miller was just caught in so many lies. It is absolutely insane. And me and Gabby, well, we have the receipts. So who knows what else this guy is lying about? And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about what I believe happened, my own theory. So stick around and I definitely think the cops need to take a closer look at what all the cyber sleuths across the internet have dug up. But before we do that and get into this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you can hang out with the best private investigator on all of YouTube, that is Miss Gabby. So let's get into it. JP sent a video to True Crime Re on TikTok trying to clear his name and it's nothing but contradictory statements. And personally, I find this guy really hard to listen to and he shows classic narcissistic traits like Darvo where they will deny the allegations and try to make himself out to be a victim kind of thing. But the receipts don't lie. So let's start playing this clip. My wife uh, was diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder, schizophrenia, uh, dependent personality disorder, and several other uh, diagnoses by different doctors at different times all throughout the past seven years. The two diagnoses that stayed with her um, every single year was uh, schizophrenia and bipolar 2. Bipolar 2 is where you're super high and you want to give away $1,000. You know, uh, so the low is you want to end your life. And um, she um, went super high and super low many, many times over the years. And it was a, a struggle, almost a constant struggle, but we got through it. We got through it. And um, the schizophrenia is where she would hear voices or talk to people that were not there. Uh, she'd play chess with people that were not there without a chessboard. Um, she would sometimes forget who I was or forget that I was her husband. Um, she'd forget who she was or <clears throat> forget that she was my wife. Sometimes she'd forget who her family is. Uh, things like that. Sure, Jan. And I don't even need to say anything because the top comment on this video is, quote, aren't those his diagnosis? End quote. So with JP, it feels like every accusation is an omission. It turns out JP is the one allegedly that has schizophrenia. So this is Micah Miller's sister, Anna Francis, spilling all of the tea. John Paul was take had been taking um, probably since he was in his... Um, older teens, um, early 20s, he started taking medication for his mental health. He's been on schizophrenia medication for over 20 years. People also believe that Micah actually doesn't even have mental illness since JP has provided absolutely zero proof of her medical records. And if she does have mental illness, it was most likely brought on by JP, as her family has said. So, People are also pointing out it's interesting that JP mentioned that Micah was playing chess because an anonymous participant on the Facebook group, Justice for Micah Miller, which is shout out to them, they're doing a great job, writes this, quote, thought it was interesting that JP mentioned Micah playing chess in his newest video. Wasn't that what Chris was supposed to be doing at the pool the day he fell in and drowned, end quote. So... This actually gave me chills, and I thought it was interesting as well that JP in this video was wearing what looks like to be an orange jumpsuit. So maybe that's um, premonition or Micah using her voodoo in the afterlife. But Chris Skinner mysteriously passed away and also happened to be JP's alleged new girlfriend's ex-husband. Oh, what a confusing web we weave. I don't know if you got that. So JP's ex-wife, Allison, actually said she found it quote unquote chilling. There are two passings related to JP. So people are wondering if Chris Skinner was unalive so that JP and Susie Skinner could be together. I'm not saying that he did that. I'm not trying to get sued here, but the connection does give me pause. And a lot of people are pointing out that this is hella interesting and sus. So Melody writes, the only people that say she was mental is JP, his dad, and Charles Randall. All her family, coworkers, friends, and everyone else says she was not. Now, isn't that odd, which is what we said earlier? So again, no one's buying what JP is selling in this video. Anyway, let's continue with the video where he talks about this cryptic March 11th date. On March 11th, remember that date because uh, you super sleuths out there are going to need to know that date uh, for the future. But on March 11th, something uh, happened that kind of forever changed the course of our lives. And um, she went really um, deep into the schizophrenia and was um, uh, delusional and uh, 
uh, accusing me of certain things, slashing tires or sending a naked picture or uh, stalking her or things like that that I didn't do. And um, So the problem with this is that there is literally proof that this is not the case and this is just a blatant lie. I mean, there's a police report that documents Micah Miller being tracked and stalked by J.P. Miller. I believe there were like four police reports where Micah was trying to obtain a restraining order and was documenting this sketchy behavior by J.P. Miller. And I believe on the day that Micah passed, J.P. knew Micah was onto him being a stalker, so J.P. sent someone else to do his bidding. That's why you see her looking at the green shirt guy and rolling her eyes, because she knew J.P. had sent him. So now would be a good time to say that I personally believe, I'm not saying this is fact, that Solid Rock Church might just be a cult because people are still showing up to the congregation despite JP being exposed by both of his former wives for allegedly grooming girls not of age, among other heinous things. There's also an FBI investigation for the church allegedly misappropriating funds through their charity. So... I'm sure you're confused by the email on my screen, but JP must have forgotten that he sent this email where he basically says straight from the horse's mouth that he did do these things. In one, he admits to damaging her car, and then in another, he admits to posting a photo of her not wearing clothing on Facebook. So, I mean, is this JP schizophrenia speaking right now? Like, how did he forget that he actually admitted to doing this and like 500,000 views on this video was out there and he's trying to categorically deny that like people aren't dumb jp and let's continue on with this video just full of lies in my opinion and we worked hard to keep her on her medicine we worked very hard to keep her enjoying her life uh she didn't have to cook a single meal she didn't have to clean she didn't have to work uh she just had to take her medicine and enjoy her life and um we did our best with what we had but so this is also a lie because Micah was actually a part of many programs at Solid Rock Church I mean she was working and I actually kind of found this a bit disrespectful to say like oh she didn't even work like all she had to do was take her medicine when she was alive but she was in charge of a youth group at Solid Rock and also was like doing a lot of public relations for the church so this video is from Robbie Harvey on YouTube but if she was so sick then you have to question Question, why was Micah Miller in charge of so many programs at Solid Rock Church? Specifically, she was in charge of the youth. If a woman is so mentally unstable, why was she allowed to be a part of teenagers' lives? According to multiple sources, when Micah was in charge of the youth group, it flourished. She did a phenomenal job, and parents loved her. I've spoken to many parents who had several children underneath the leadership of Micah Miller at Solid Rock Church. None of them ever saw any signs of mental illness. Not only that, Micah Miller seemed to be the face of Solid Rock Church, appearing in multiple videos on their Facebook page. It's October 12th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. And of course, we all know she was on stage every single Sunday leading worship. Anyway, I believe the FBI needs to open an investigation into Micah Miller's passing because I think Micah was being stalked in the moments leading up to her unaliving. She knew she was being watched by the green shirt guy at the pawn shop. They even made eye contact at one point and she rolled her eyes. There's even a moment where as she leaves, the green shirt guy goes up to the window to watch her depart the pawn shop from her car. So this video is from Freedom Voice Online. Uh, it was the guy in the green shirt that really raised the eyebrow. And I got a lot of comments on my last video, uh, basically asking, how did I know that he was actually stalking her once he went through the doors? Well, before I actually put that video out, I took a good hard look at the video. And one of the things I noticed was that if you'll notice here, the guy in the green shirt, he has his hands behind his back. Now, when you look at the video uh, that I posted, you look up at the timestamp, you can see him actually bending over if you look really good here. And I don't know if your computer is large enough, your screen is large enough to see it, but you can see him walking toward the window. And the interesting thing about it is he's in the same position with his arms behind his back. 
If you look really close at 1234 and 20 seconds, you can see his arms behind his back. You can see him clearly walking up to the window. Now I'm going to zoom even closer. You can see him sort of bending over. You can see the arms behind the back. Just like he was when he before he walked into the jury mark. So uh, this was the conclusion that I sort of arrived at as a result of watching the video. Then when you put it side by side, and I synchronized it perfectly, when you put it side by side, as he's walking up to the window, that's exactly around the time when Micah was backing out. I mean, you can look at the video yourself and you'll see. Uh, the timestamps are, are accurate. So the question is, was she being stalked? Was she being followed? And on my last video, I actually posted this image and thanks for all the feedback. There's a traffic cam of what appears to be the green shirt guy's car following her closely. You guys pretty much debunked the van video. So I want to be clear, this is actually from Flow Daddy Flow on TikTok. The van was actually debunked, but I'm still on the fence about that silver car. Um, I mean, looking closely at it, it might be missing the sunroof, but it's blurry. So in my opinion, it's still hard to tell. Like that car could be similar. So again, the image on the left is the traffic cam and on the image on the right is the parking lot outside the pawn shop. And some people think the cars actually line up. And of course, people in the comment section say that they know who green shirt guy is and it's a cop from a town over. And I'm not gonna name his name, but yeah, they're saying it's a cop and you can just easily find his information online. It would make a lot of sense if her passing was covered up by officials and the police were in on it. Because personally, I think the 911 call was faked using AI by cloning Micah's voice. I also think it was a huge red flag that Micah's body was allegedly covered in bruises and the cremation was rushed. Of course, the scene itself looked very staged. There's no current to take her behind that one corner in the slough, so her body was placed there. Micah also warned that if she were to pass with a bullet in her head, it wasn't her, it was JP, and those are her words, not mine. So I just wanna know, what do you guys think? Sound off in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe by hitting my face right above Miss Gabby, who is literally the best private investigator on all of YouTube. Bye guys, love you. Let's roll the outro.